Yeah, hello. And thanks for watching. Um, what is this video actually about? Well, basically, I want to recreate the um, computer I spent most time in my childhood with, later childhood that is, in a virtual machine. And that's the Compact Presario 4506. Mine didn't had the um, trapdoor here in front. Underneath is just a single CD-ROM drive and also mine had a 10x drive which we soon replaced with a 52x drive and um, yeah it's a late 90s early 2000s machine with an MMX 200, Intel Pentium, an S3 Trio 64v2, and 16 max of onboard RAM, which could be expanded up to 48, which uh, mine also came with. And yeah, it also had a. Uh, mine came with a 3 gigs uh, hard drive, which was plenty at the time. Well, it was still enough. Let me put it this way. And it also came with Windows 98 pre-installed, second edition that is. Um, yeah. Special case about um, this machine, actually. No pun intended. It had no power button on the front. The only power switch it had really was the one on the PSU and um, it had two USB 1.1 ports as well as serial parallel VGA PS2 for mouse and keyboard a sound card input and output and a joystick port and this one also had a network card mine received one later on it was a 10 uh, 10 100 Recom card with uh, Ethernet and actually also BNC on it, which I happened to have received from my math teacher at the time in fifth and sixth grade. And uh, I was allowed to bring my computer with me to school because every student in my class had one for, the, for themselves. and. Um, yeah, I could bring mine with me once I had a new computer at home. And it was pretty fun, except that we had a BNC network in class, and so every computer in series had to stay on and not to be turned off if you wanted to print something which was usually. Stupid if you had the computer at the other side of the network and the computer that the printer was connected to, which was the far one, uh, the far left one or far right one, I can't remember right now. All right. It's kind of straightforward. You can, in Linux case, get. Um, Eighty six box from Flatback or Flathub rather and also the ROM files. And yeah, it's a fork of PCEM. And it basically allows you to um emulate, not virtualize, but rather emulate old machines. I've already reconfigured mine because it is a little tricky and first time I tried to install Windows 98 it failed terribly, it wouldn't boot and yeah basically it was something with the IRQ. I can't tell what it is out of the head because I was just too young at the time to understand these things, but um, yeah, I tweaked around settings and it worked for me. Basically, 
the machine has a socket 7, um, socket for the CPU, it is yes, the Presago 4500 with the MMX, that's all correct. And yeah, nice thing about um, this emulator is that the um, clock is synced to the PC clock. And yeah, basically, all settings are. Here to match mine. Uh, my PC, the only thing I couldn't uh, set up are the USB ports. Also, I set it to uh, having a wheel but, uh, rather than two or three buttons because I switched around mouse, uh, mice a lot, especially in the early years, or L, the earlier ones, because. Back then, mice often still came with uh, boards rather than um, a laser, and everyone who lived at the time probably knows how terrible this actually was, unless you knew what you had to do to clean it, and mine always broke. Yeah, it's, here's the network card I had. <clears throat> And yeah, really the only thing that uh, isn't available are the USB ports, I think. Nope, nothing here. And it's, I just call it Presario, I made a new um, file just to get through the um, Insula uh, installation process with you guys. Also set the um, CD drive to pip the 2x. I didn't even know there were 72 ones. And yeah, that's how it is. Yeah, I'm resetting the computer. And actually, because mine was set to German back then, and I am not German. And who could have thought? I also set the BIOS to be in that language, just for nostalgia reasons. Other than that, it's pretty much um, as it should have been. Yeah, let's um, insert the um, virtual CD. And what I will do is start the installation routine from CD ROM. I have to enter the 98 um, floppy disk. I am not certain whether this is even necessary, but. I did it nonetheless, and even if not, creating it isn't too difficult. Let's expand um, the window size so you can see more, or even make it full screen. Yeah, now it's just formatting the um, CD, uh, the CD, the C drive, and this takes a little while. I'll sped up the um, process for you guys, and once it's near completion, I'll be back. So the that drive is now formatted, and what happens now is scan disk gets executed. It does a little scan on the, um, in that case, virtual hard drive. Everything is fine. Files will be copied, and here we are in the Windows ninety eight setup. 
estimated uh, installation will be about 30 to 60 minutes. Uh, it can take a while, I know, but this is how long it took back then to install Windows uh, installations. At least on this machine, I know by the end of the um, 90s, early 2000s, there were already the Pentium 2 and 3 processors, but this is all I had back then, and actually it was a pretty fun machine to have. I had lots of fun playing games with it, albeit I had no 3D acceleration or anything like it. Most of the games I enjoyed still work fine, and so yeah. I couldn't complain. Neither had I any reason to. I was just happy being a young kid in my early teens. Oh no. And yeah. Just having a computer that works. That wasn't a common thing back then. Trust me guys. And yeah, basically what I'm doing now is doing a customized installation, removing the things I never needed anyway, adding some that I love to have, like fancy Windows um, Plus themes, like underwater um, space, Windows Extra and Windows 98, Scion. Those were really cool themes to have back then. It's a thing that seemed kind of lost in time for Windows standards. It's still pretty common to have customized Linux desktops, but for Windows, I don't know, somehow every Windows desktop these days looks the same. And while um, I didn't really have the use for it, I loved to do silly comics with a Microsoft chat. And yeah, that's why I'm also installing it. Same with the briefcase, which was actually handy to carry over files to my school PC. And yeah. That's, that is even um, the name my computer had back then, that um, Compact Presario. So I'm also calling it like that. And here we go. That again will take a while, that's why I'm spreading up the... Um, Recording and once I'm near finished here, um, I'll will I'll will return here and talk to you guys again. The installation went through almost. The computer is restarting now. All right, uh, the um, emulator, the emulated machine, but, uh, and after that's done, so Windows is starting now. Yes, that takes a while. I've done that many times on real hardware on this machine when I actually had it in my possession and in this emulator as well. And it's the long ride too.
and once that's added, insert it. It's almost done. Just 18 more minutes to go. It will check the um, and initialize the um, driver database for Windows 98. And yeah, we're almost there. It also, also checks for um, plug and play hardware, which isn't really available because I have no USB devices. Maybe in a later release, I hope it will still add a USB 1.1 support in uh, 86 box. That would be awesome. But yeah, it is what it is. In fact, my um, real PC, my real machine was that slow eventually on that um, splash screen, that set compact. Basically, it took a minute before I came to that screen or um, in the Windows 98 splash screen at all. Probably the um, hard drive was failing, but um, yeah, memories of my childhood. And while this um, emulator doesn't need a minute on the splash screen, on the manufacturer splash screen to change, it loves to crash on the um, loading, initial loading of the complete uh, Windows 98 installation. So we're almost here, almost there, whatever. Um, it sets up the time zone, system settings, start menu, Windows help. And yeah, that's basically the um, installation experience of back then. Yet another reboot, and that should be it. Unless the machine is crashing again, who knows? This um, emulator is still a little, a little nitpicky. But it looks okay so far. Yes, it uh, put it into the proper Windows 98. That's good. And since I removed the um, CD ROM, I need to reinsert it yet again. So, yeah.
I'm checking for hardware takes a while, I know, but um, enjoy the experience. This isn't sped up or anything, it just takes forever. Yep, one more time, it asks me to reset, and no, it should be done for real, I... but I'm pretty certain. Only thing I'm scared about is um, that it boots uh, uh, hangs again, uh, which is the case here, but that's a BIOS issue, I don't know why, but pressing F1 and I'm basically through. Which is now nothing. Welcome to Windows. Yeah, yeah. Then that screen and stuff, I know. Please enter the 98 CD again. Yeah. Hope it didn't crash, but um, the hard drive indicator is still blinking, so I'm expecting things happen here in the background. Also, the mouse cursor is some. Um, Showing the busy sign, the busy um, sign clock, and yeah. And there we are, welcome to Windows 98, ladies and gentlemen. What a beauty. Well, not in 16 colors, that is. I give you that. But. It at least can output 16 bit. At least in the emulator. I know that I ran this machine at 1024 by 768 at, um, I believe, even 32. I don't know what it is, but, um, yeah. Let's restart it again. Because... Windows. Finally, it seems to work, and this time for real, I hope. 
Yep, looks good. Sounds there as well. Yeah, the app plug and play drive hasn't been detected. Maybe when I check for the drivers on the CD ROM again. Uh, it's the monitor. This thing. Live and play screen. Yes, here we are. Let's go for the CD drive entirely. Seems good, seems good. But it didn't detect my um, audio drive for whatever reason. Just so hot. Okay. Everything else though seems to work. Okay. Um just for fun, let's make it look similar to um what my machine looked like back then. Not entirely, I had some custom icons and um also another Green background, but I really enjoyed the um, space background and space theme. It looked really fancy to me back then and really cool and yeah. I just had my fun with it. Also the screensaver was pretty fun. It was the astronaut flying around in space near the um, space station you can see here. See? Uh, now that I see um, how smooth it is, probably the um, machine ran better at 800 by 600 because I remember on my real compact Presario back then this was super slow. Probably because I ran the machine at 1024 by 768. Okay. Lessons learned. Should have kept this machine at this low resolution. Uh, still try to get hands on a 3D accelerator. And yeah, what you can see here are basically some ISO files and DOS games I had back then. And those ISOs are made by uh, CD-ROMs I actually have here in my storage still. Um, probably showing you an image now in a B-roll. Yeah, it was pretty fun playing all these games back then. Maybe not all of them, but um, yeah, I definitely had my fun playing Hugo. Can I get some green in a size? Yep. Work. Oh. Okay. Yes.
Interesting. I didn't know the game ran at that low resolution. But yeah, if you um, lived in any European country back then, maybe also the Americas and maybe in Asia, I don't know. But here in uh, Germany, this was a pretty popular game show on cable TV. At least here in Germany. And people would call, uh, call in and control who go by um, using their own numpad. And yeah, it had a little delay, admittedly, in the show at least. But um, the games are very responsive. Unless you miss the buttons, and yeah, I know I really had my fun playing these games on CD-ROM when um, we saw them in stores. Initially, we tried to run them on my father's PC, which had a pretty similar configuration, actually, but we don't know what it was, but it wouldn't. Uh, run at all. Maybe he didn't have the MMX, maybe he had an overdrive 100, which could be because I know he upgraded it from um, 386 all the way up. But that, um, yeah. It was still a good machine. Not gonna lie, he also had the um, IBM Model M and uh, pretty good um, right. a pretty good uh, monitor. Many games run fine. But yeah. He was also online very, really very early, when internet really wasn't a thing in Germany. And I believe I took the wrong path now. Yeah, I lost. But... What gives? Try something else. My parents also like to play um, pinball games a lot with me, and I know that this uh, CD ROM has a demo version of. Um, niche. Um, I can't even read it because it looks so weird. But yeah, this is from Pinball Dreams. And... Uh, yeah, here you can see it. And basically it's a DOS part of um, Pinball Dreams. And yeah, it was already extracted. And I remember that we played a lot of um, pinball back in the day.
Yeah, and it was... This is a joy for me to play these old games again in their former glory. I actually still have um, old computers here, an old uh, Sony Bio laptop. I believe it has an Pentium 3 inside, which would be plenty and fine for all kinds of Windows 98 games and even DOS games. But I didn't bother to set it up yet. And right now I have no luck in this pinball here. Which is a little embarrassing for show reasons, for case reasons, but yeah. Nope, the game didn't want me to play. Another silly little game I had back then was actually this pinball here. It wasn't very special or anything. But um, it was a gift. And we were allowed to... Um, go to the city with them. and pick a gift of choice for like uh, 10 euros max and this was one of the games they had for that little money maybe it was five i don't know well, i can't remember anymore but um yeah i was actually happy that um they allowed me to um pick a game of choice because Usually my teachers and my classmates uh, weren't too happy that I was playing computer games all day long. But um, yeah. Here's my um, ISO file of Nopix 3.7. I still have the disk. As you may have seen on um, the B-roll, if not, here's a B-roll of it, and yeah, I yeah, ordered um, the CD-ROM uh, CD um, in December of 2003, I believe, I saw the game, uh, the game, uh, the disc pro in a, on a German TV show that uh, featured um, Knobix in it, Knobix Linux, and um, they invited the developer of the distro, Klaus Knopper, and they showcased what is possible. And I was actually really impressed because I was really into computers early on already. And what fascinated me about it is that this is a um, non-Windows operating system for computers that runs and boots off CD-ROM without me having to install it. And yeah, all these uh, kinds of text and code, it was fascinating for me just to see this crazy stuff going on and I didn't even knew what to make of it initially, but um, yeah, this was basically my gateway into Linux. But yeah, that's basically the um, emulation of um, this wonder uh, wonderful um, old PC, and I just had fun messing around with it for once again. Sometimes I'm in that nostalgia mood, and yeah. Thanks for watching, I hope, and have a good day, good evening, whatever, and thanks for watching again. See ya.